Let's talk about inspiration. Where do you draw your inspiration from? From him. Ah, uh, that doesn't count for me. It's from her <laughs> and, and her life, this her work. This is easy. creator has their own fingerprint, their own language. To her, it was about structure, about balance, gravity. It's about how clothes should be this fluid vapor around the woman. The woman was not aware of those details, but that dress would live forever in her closet. Isabel understood that time is recorded by fashion. We dress time, and nothing ever disappears. It leaves an echo, it leaves a vibration. Taking the ride on the Hudson River really makes you forget everything. It's like a filter, it lets things out and you're almost a blank canvas when you step off the water. One of the biggest gifts of being an immigrant is that your parents are so busy surviving that they don't dwell on you. No one tells you what you're gonna be. My early memories of Cuba was the colonial part of Havana, this heavy wrought iron, almost inquisition-like feeling, dark passageways and arcades of columns but yet Havana's floating in this turquoise tropical paradise. That mixture is unique. Isabel's work is very much about the architecture in her town, that sense of mystery. Isabel is from the middle of the island. It was a tobacco growing area up in the hills. My mother had sisters, 15 of them. So I always had women around me and the characters were something that I always found interesting and in how they all expressed themselves differently was something that I, I enjoyed. I imagine that's part of what makes me feel comfortable around all the role playing that it takes to dress women. Isabel landed in the US in 1969 and I came in 1967. West New York at the time was a little Havana on the Hudson. It was a lot of cruising up and down the street great dance culture, so you heard music in the street. Like that movie, American Graffiti, but in Spanish. I met Isabel, first day of freshman Spanish class. Everyone was starting to get dressed up and show off for each other. She realized that the only way she was gonna get clothes was to make them herself. Isabel's style came naturally. That was her natural way. I was like alfalfa in The Little Rascals. I was missing teeth. I was like a kid. I was more like 10 at 13. And Isabel at 14 was more like 34 years old. She seemed like a divorced, stylish woman. Like this sophisticated female version of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers combined. Beautiful long-legged trousers and these colored shirts. The way she spoke, the way she perceived people, the way she looked you in the eye, all that was so alluring. I told her I wanted to marry her, I think like the second day, and she said, you must be crazy. But we stayed friends. We liked spending time with each other. I started to take pictures of Isabel, and she became my muse immediately. Isabel was working at the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum when Mrs. Breland was there. The Costume Institute was the entire basement. Mrs. Breland needed people to repair these old, incredible masterworks. People like Jackie Kennedy consulted with her on what they should wear. Isabel was maybe 16 or 17 years old, and that's where she said she got her real fashion education. The idea that fashion is what time looks like. A body's disintegrate and they, they turn to nothing, but all that work that went into making these incredible works of art is what remains. We were on a school trip. It was pouring rain. 
We were on our way to the Museum of Modern Art and we got lost. But we walk into the store. Fiorucci was the, the daytime Studio 54. It opened up a world of possibilities. I meet people like Keith Haring and Basquiat, Halston and Lena Horne, Andy Warhol. Andy's advice to me when he saw my artwork is, you don't need to do anything different. Do what you do, just do it bigger. We really did grow like two vines around each other. There was a constant dialogue between Isabel and I. She made these shapes in her brain. She described them to me. I tried to sketch down the idea of what she was thinking about. When he draws, I always say that it's his heart and his hand at work. He doesn't process. He doesn't go through his mind. He really does connect heart and hand. We started our business in 1984, right when we got married. Basically, I took clothes from Isabel's closet and went to two stores, Henry Bendel's and Patricia Fields, two very different places in Manhattan. One was a society kind of crowd, and one was very much a downtown, transgressive, artsy crowd. But the fact that Isabel's clothes were appreciated in both of those worlds was a validation. We got our first orders and ran back to our house and told Isabel, okay, we gotta make two dozen of these and three dozen of those. Fabric ran from the living room all the way back to the bedroom. The clothes had enough personality and substance and style that they were successful. So that's how we started our first collection. We didn't have any hair or makeup people. The models just came in and did their own makeup and did their own hair and basically picked the clothes that they liked from the rack and wore them in any order they pleased. The first show had 10 or 12 people in the audience only, but it was Bill Cunningham, the buyer from Bergdorf Goodman's, some editors from Vogue. It was a very small group of people, but boy, were they the top of the field. It's Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes with Grace Jones, designers Mark Jacobs, Isabel Toledo, and Angel Estrada. Moda es arte? Moda es moda, arte es arte. Business grew organically, little by little, but the only time a business can grow is when you have creative growth. Like going to Paris, because we got exposed to a whole new world. Isabel's style introduces kind of very bohemian, drip, soft, sensual way of dressing. When her clothes were at places like Barney's, they really stood up from these shoulder padded, structured, shaped things. Isabel's clothes were worn with ballet slippers and sandals and very much about being grounded. She really introduced that flavor, which is a new flavor. Michelle Obama is officially the new first lady of fashion. I thought of it as a character in a painting, and I recognized what was going to be standing behind her. I wanted to figure out what could I dress her in that she can pop out and she can carry the emotion that the whole country was feeling, which was optimism. That inauguration is the day that the world met Isabel Toledo. I always say to everyone, Isabel and Ruben, I want to be like them when I grow up. I love that opportunity to work in mass because you really do see that a great idea can fit anywhere. We love the weekends because the staff was in it. We would get to work in our underwear all day in the studio and then go up on the roof and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Isabel would be watering the plants and designing the next thing, and then go right back to work, so it was seamless. Our life was a fantasy, the whole thing was a fantasy, so living, living in love and creating, you're endlessly floating in a timeless, no schedule mentality. You don't even stop to think how old you are.
He was like this beautiful rose folding up and then flew off like a beautiful condor, you know? Like a beautiful wing spread out and just left. It was that fast and that, the way she was, fearless and elegant and majestic. When Isabel passed, there was months and months of this torture. There was a point where I really did feel like Isabel's hand penetrated my heart and massaged the misery out of my soul, and then I could breathe again. In my mind, the Toledos have left the planet. The only way I could keep going is to imagine that that couple has left me in charge. I'm the custodian of that couple. As long as I'm working, I'm in a really good place because she's with me constantly. Luckily, I have enough vibration in my soul of memory from those years with Isabel that carries me forward. We did have a heavenly life. We both knew how blessed we were. You can imagine two people having that experience day in, day out, year after year. There's something where land meets water that's magical. You're in suspended animation, I don't think. I just absorb. I absorb the weather, the moisture, the mist, the sunniness, the sounds. You just release. Trust is the main thing, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that for us, that's, that's essential. And I think that, that for living, that's essential, right? You have to be in love with what you're doing and you have to have that total freedom and, and security to let go and fly. And you feel that with the students here as well, that they trust the space that they're in, they trust each other, they very really true. do collaborate, which is something that I, I found very interesting. Yeah, we have such two different disciplines and we have such different aesthetics, but that's what makes the work rich because we're coming at it from different angles. And that only adds to your work. Scad to me looks like that's exactly where they're going. Feels like home. <laughs>